Welcome back again to Solidity Programming in Ethereum using the Ethereum blockchain. Name is Alex Louis. Never gonna get ads on these, so don't even think about it. YouTube, no ads, ad free. All my courses, ad free. Just a little plug in there. Uh, okay, so let's talk about functions. Functions in Solidity are pretty simple if you come from a Java or any type of object oriented programming background but I'm not gonna go into it assuming that you do have an extensive object oriented programming background because this course is for people that don't know, don't even have any programming background so let's talk about visibility so in any programming language you have the concept of visibility mean meaning that for anything that you write you can control the way that the outside world is able to view your code and if we take that a step further and we start talking about contracts within contracts you have control as to who is going to see your functions from the outside world because eventually you're gonna get to a point where contracts will talk to each other you have contract a may talk to contract B but sometimes you may want to have contract B not have access to certain things in contract a the first thing that we want to talk about is for every contract you're gonna have a function that you could or don't necessarily have to declare which is called a constructor it's called a constructor the constructor function is the one that gets automatically executed and we call this in, in the object oriented world it gets instantiated when somebody either declares an instance of your contract or it actually gets deployed to the blockchain okay so anytime that I'm gonna create click create here my constructor will get executed now if I didn't have a constructor it automatically has one which you won't view it but your constructor will still get executed it's, it's going to be a hidden one that's going to be automatically created you won't see it if you if you omit it from your contract let's get that that concept out of the way so the first thing that you need to realize that for every contract you're going to have a constructor function doesn't have it's not required for you to define it i usually define it myself but you don't have to define it you don't have to define it in this particular contract I called contract A I have a constructor called function A and I'm calling my day I'll show you why I'm doing that in a couple minutes now now that we have a constructor function uh, let's talk about visibility okay in terms of functions so visibility in a function will indicate who or what is going to access it if they can and there's four types of visibilities okay there's four so you can have external public internal and private so any function that you write can be marked as these by default if you don't include any of the keywords any visibility then all functions are assumed as public public means that any contract or anybody from the outside world can access your function okay can access your function so that's what public means okay so if you write if you go along along the contract development and you're writing your functions and you don't mark any of them with any getter any visibility then they're assumed public meaning that they're accessible to the outside world okay they're accessible to the outside world if you mark a function as private private means that they will only be visible to your contract itself okay to the contract itself so when we talk about inheritance you can't talk about visibility with going into a little bit of inheritance so there be times that you're gonna have contract a be is a sort of a parent to another contract which is called inheritance if a if a function is called private 
for now you must realize that anything that's private is only accessible within this contract it's only accessible within this contract so nobody outside this contract can call the function f okay and that goes for any state variables too because these visibility uh, keywords also apply to variables uh, outside a state variable so in this state variable here that's why I have a public modifier and this is the visibility it's public okay and then when we run this you see so again so right now we know public and we know private I mean so public means it's public it's it's out in the open anybody can look at it private means only the contract itself can access it okay so as long as anybody in here can is is within this contract so function a or my constructor or my set data if I want to call F I can do that but if I had a contract outside of this and it wanted to access F it, it won't be able to do it because it's private okay because it's private then we have the visibility called internal uh, internal has to do with in a little bit of inheritance so we'll talk about that a little bit uh, internal means that you can access it from this contract okay you can access it from this contract and you could only access it for anybody that is derived from contract a and that's that's called that's what we call um, polymorphism where you're gonna have the, the concept of uh, inheritance uh, where you could have contracts that derive from other contracts so for example if I have a contract that derives from A called B then B would be a child of A which means that B has ex access to all the functions in A that are marked as obviously public and internal as internal if they're private then I uh, can't access that function okay that means I can't access that function okay so again internal a little bit different because it's again it's it's accessible within the contract but it's also accessible for anybody that is a child of a so if, if we take a look at an example in real world you have your parents so you are derived from your parents you're a child of your parents so if they had internal functions that they wanted you to that you could access they they're gonna have internal functions that you could access so you as their child have access to their internal functions but if we take a look at for example your dad's brother or your dad's sister who is not derived from your dad they're actually just brother and sister they cannot access their internal function because they're not derived from your brother and sister they're, they're they're from your dad's brother and sister that's it they have a brother and sister relationship but you yourself as a child are derived from your parents so you have access to their internal functions I mean, that's the best example I can kind of put it so we talk about internal public and private and then we talk about external so external functions are functions that you're gonna know that will not be called will not be called from your contract but they are still visible from other contracts they are still visible from other contracts so for example if I had another function here we call it uh, EX and we mark it as external returns you went and um, you can just return five okay so this function is marked as external meaning that the EVM is expecting that anybody outside this contract will be able to call it will be able to call it but it knows that you as a contract a are not gonna I'm not gonna call it yourself 
and so if I try and do something along the lines of ex, right, it's going to give me an error. Okay, it's going to give me an error because it says uh, undeclared that it doesn't recognize that this is a function within this contract because it's marked as external. Now, what I could do, okay, what I could do is I can say this dot ex, and then that'll work. But that beats the whole point of marking a function external. You, you only want to mark a function external if you know that it's going to be called outside of this contract. Okay, now what what would be the difference between external versus public? Okay, well, big difference in terms of gas. So if you mark a function as public, obviously it's going to use more gas. Okay, uh, ex external is not. What the reason is because when you talk about parameters in a function a public function will make a copy of the parameters in your function and it's gonna make a copy from, from a section of memory called call data so anything that's more public or private or anything is going to make a copy of it okay whereas if you mark a function as external okay as external it's going to read the parameters directly from call data okay so call data is a section in the EVM where in memory where you can where you can have parameters of your functions that's basically a special memory that's special memory location where they're going to be stored uh, it's, you can modify it and it's not persistent uh, and that's always where your arguments are going to be stored so we know that any function parameters that are coming in by default are going to be stored in memory okay now what it also does is it sees the visibility so if it's an external function and you have a parameter such as let's say you went b then this variable is not going to get is not going to be a copy of call data it's going to actually read it directly from call data where this A is actually a copy of whatever is in call data. And in doing that, it saves you on gas. Okay, it saves you on gas. Now, again, don't make it external. Don't go crazy and make it external be just because you are going to save on gas. That's not the point because then that means you're going to not be able to call it um, from your contract. It's only going to be able to be called outside your contract. So you want to also make that distinction when where if you mark a function external then you know that it's not going to be called within your contract now why would you want to mark a function? well there's this other type of objects I'll call them objects but uh, it's called libraries you can write libraries where you can write some functions that you may only call from your contracts so the library itself may not have the the need for it to call functions within the library okay so you may write a library who everybody uses and you know that those functions from your library are always going to be called externally because there's no need for them to be called internally okay um, so that's why you would use uh, external okay and we'll go into libraries uh, as we go go through the the course now the other thing that I want to talk about and I'll stop at, at that point uh, is the return so whenever you're gonna return something back to uh, back from your con from your function you must type in the word returns okay so you would have returns and then the data type itself you can return multiple values but you also have to define multiple data types so if I want to return and say I want to create another function call it uh, P right and I wanted to say returns you went you went so I can return to two like that so I could do that okay I can return multiple values here okay I can return multiple values and that's perfectly fine okay 
So let's take a look. Let's take a look at this um this example here. So what I'm doing here is I'm deploying this contract to the EVM. And when I deploy the contract, my constructor is automatically going to get instantiated and call set data. Okay, and then set data is an internal internal function that will assign a to data. Okay, with data being a public state variable. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so at this point, if I click on get data, if I click on data, right, data is going to have the value five, right, because it's going to assign five to data, and there you go, that's five. Okay, that's five. Um, and again, this external one, it's it's still accessible right it's still accessible and I, it can be called from anybody from outside okay anybody from outside and then P uh, it's gonna return two numbers uh, three and two okay three and two so we'll talk about so we so a couple of things we went over right now in this little lecture we went over the visibility which is external, public, internal, private. And again, visibility also applies not only to functions, but to variables, as you saw here, it's public to data, right? And we talked about what functions can return. Now your function doesn't have to return something, it can just be a function that does things, manipulates variables, okay? It modifies behavior, that's fine, okay? So, and then you can return one variable and you have to define the type or you can return multiple values separated by a comma. Uh, you return multiple times. Now, in the next video, I'm going to continue with functions. It'll be part two, and we'll talk about views and pures and all these other things that go into the function when you're trying to mark um, what type of function it's classified as. So. We have the visibilities, but we also can mark if a function is payable, view, pure. And we'll talk about what that means. Okay? So thanks again for viewing my video about functions. Alex Louis, always ad free, never gonna charge you a dime. Check me out at www.parttimeadjunct.com. Send me an email at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com, or you can just comment me on this video. Thanks, I'll see you on the next video.